Hey guys, I recently harvested this nice buck here. I say nice buck, he's got a little dinky rack, but um, that's just genetics. Um, he was a big bodied deer, has a good broad head to him, so I know he's, he's a mature buck. He just, you know, because of genetics, had this little dinky rack. But it's still a memory I made outdoors and, and one that I want to preserve. You know, it's not something I'm going to take and, and spend several hundred dollars for to get it, uh, take it to a taxidermist and have it professionally mounted. But I would like to preserve this memory. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take it through the process of bleaching the skull and doing what's known as a European mount, uh, to where I just have the clean and bleached and whitened skull and antlers that I can put on a plaque and hang on my wall. So... I'm going to go ahead and take you guys with me through the process. Uh, this is not something that I have done before. Let me go ahead and just put that out there. <laughs> but I figured I'd film it because either way, I figure y'all can get something out of this. If you do it yourselves, you can either learn from my successes or you can learn from my mistakes and then not make them. So I thought I'd go ahead and film the process. Um, this is the first time I've done this. But I do have a general idea of how what I actually need to do. Um, so let's get started. First thing we need to do is actually to skin out the head and remove all of the excess flesh and everything else uh, from the head, from the skull, before we go to the next step, which is going to be to boil it. It's going to be a little nasty. Um, and I would definitely recommend you wear some type of gloves when you're dealing with anything where you're going to be in contact with saliva or brain matter, anything like that on an animal. I mean, I'm sure this was a healthy deer, but it's just kind of erring on the side of caution. So I would definitely recommend wear some type of nitro gloves or rubber gloves that way, you know, just from a sanitary uh, perspective, I think it'd be a good idea. And if you're just if you're not trying to save you know if you're not doing this like for a a taxidermy job to where the skin is going to get mounted there really is no right or wrong way to do it as long as you get all of this the as long as you skin the head out and you get as much of the tissue and and the eyes and and the meat off the skull as you can there's really no no right way to do it just you know get it done
okay so I got all of the meat and tissue and flesh off of the skull that I could I got the jawbone loose and separate um, and so realistically I think I got everything off of there that I can by hand so next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and use a, probably gonna start off with about a cup of OxyClean and this is a white revive laundry whitener and stain remover whitening power uh, it's just OxyClean that you can get from uh, uh, just about any store and I'm gonna boil the skull in enough water to actually submerge all the way up to the antler to where the antlers start and like I said about a cup of OxyClean so I'm not totally sure how long I'm gonna have to boil it for uh, from what I understand my indicate my indication my visual indication is going to be whenever this little bit of membrane up here uh, tissue that is connected to the skull real tightly when it actually starts to split I believe that's supposed to be my visual indicator that it's ready to go ahead and bring outside and pressure wash it off uh, but I'll just play it by ear and I'll try to keep an eye on the time and let you guys know how long I actually boiled it for just to err on the side of caution I've gone ahead and wrapped saran wrap really tight around the base of the antlers and on up here wrapped electrical tape around it and then put a zip tie up here to keep it from loosening up and I'm just doing that hopefully to keep me from having to restain the antlers because I don't want I don't want to bleach out the antlers themselves obviously so I've got it in here with enough water I've got the jaw down in here with it and I'm just going to go ahead and put in a little bit of this OxyClean and then I'm going to go ahead and get it to a rolling boil and then turn it down to where it's just simmering uh, until I actually see that skin kind of split on the skull. Okay guys, so I've had the skull simmering for uh, maybe about 5 or 10 minutes. I figured I'd go ahead and try it. Uh, you know because I can always put it back in some fresh water a little oxyclean and simmer it a little longer I can't take any heat away from it but I can always add more if, if I see I need to simmer it longer so what I'm going to try to do to start off with is go ahead and use this high pressure nozzle because I'd like to do this in a way to where anybody on a really low budget can actually do this themselves uh, if this doesn't work then I am going to just go ahead and break out my, my pressure washer and it is what it is but I'm going to try this first this, this has some pretty pretty high pressure to it when you hook it up to a garden hose
Okay guys, this is what we've got after we have boiled and pressure washed and then allowed everything to dry overnight. This is where I'm at. Um, and, and once again, I want to go ahead and just, just totally say that this is not something I have ever done before, but I figure I'd film it, and if nothing else, y'all can learn from mistakes that I make. Uh, I do want to totally give appreciation and a shout out to the couple of guys that I got these ideas from. Um, I'm kind of combining what I've seen a couple other people do for what I thought would work for me. Uh, I do not remember the fella's name, but his channel name is White Bone Creations. And from what I gather, this is actually what he does for a living. He does European mounts, and he's just phenomenal. Uh, he's got an excellent channel. If you've never heard of it, be sure to check his channel out. It's White Bone Creations. I'll uh, put it in the description below. And the other fella is just a young guy that has a fairly new YouTube channel. I tell you, he seems like my kind of people. Uh, he's constantly doing different things. It all has to pertain to the outdoors. He's got really good ideas on how to do certain things. And so this part of it, I'm actually pulling from what I saw him do. And once again, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. His channel name is Noble Savage or Noble Savage Outdoors. Again, I'll make sure I put it in the description below so you guys can check his channel out. But what we're going to do... If we are going to coat all of the bone that we want to be whitened with this Salon Care 40 volume cream. Um, apparently this is something you use to bleach your hair I guess. But it's got a lot of hydrogen peroxide in it. And I will reiterate, only what you want to be bleached is what we're going to be putting this on. You know. Uh, if you don't want the teeth to be bleached out, don't put it on the teeth. Definitely don't get it on your antlers or you will be restaining them. So I'm just going to just basically use a little two inch brush and I'm going to just put this on everything that I want to be bleached and then I'm going let to it, let it sit. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to let it sit. Just because of time constraints, it will probably be overnight. Uh, but once I do that, you know, I'll be sure to shoot a video to show you what results I get. So here we go. We're just going to go ahead and paint this all over the bone surfaces. Be careful not to get it on like your gloves and then end up handling the antlers. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to actually grab a hold of this and I'm going to paint it on the head first and then I'm going to do the jaws because I know that I'm probably going to get this all over my gloves once it comes time to do the jaws. And we're just going to get it good and, and super coated. every little nook and cranny that we can get it into not super concerned with this underside because once I put it on a plaque it's not going to show but I know it's going to be there so I'm going to go ahead and coat the underside and all these little interior places that I can reach readily Okay guys, so here's this skull and jawbone, and 
I've basically left this salon care product that I showed you on here working for about 16 maybe 17 hours okay and at first wasn't really sure it was doing a whole lot see if I can show you here see how it started to get really frothy and bubbled up that iconic hydrogen peroxide effect so I'm really thinking this may turn out really good and that's the whole point of this I want to try to do this in such a way to where somebody with a minimal amount of supplies can do this at home so let me get the camera set up and I'm going to go ahead and rinse this off and we'll actually be able to get a better look at it if it's not where I want it then I'm just going to go ahead and reapply the uh, the bleaching product and I'm just going to let it sit longer but I actually have some good expectations here let me get the camera set up and we'll get it rinsed off Okay, so I am really happy with the way this has turned out. And I really think as this dries, it's going to actually whiten up some more. There are a couple spots I see, and I, I really think that is more due to, uh, you know, I really think I should have actually let this simmer for a longer period of time in the, uh, in the OxyClean but like I said this was my first time doing it and I was afraid of going too far and actually getting that chalky grittiness on the skull um, so in hindsight I really think I would have probably let this simmer for you know maybe more like 20 minutes you know that's something I'm just gonna have to kind of play around with uh, to feel comfortable I just like I said I, I knew I couldn't unboil it <laughs> so to speak so I was just afraid of going too far with it uh, but I really think once this dries out put a little coat of mop and glow to seal the bone I really think this is just gonna turn out really nice um, so yeah there you have it way to do your own European mount at home uh, I did try the high pressure nozzle and I think that would actually work the only thing is I didn't have a really good area where everything could drain off and it was producing such a high volume of water it was making a mess so I would say if you're gonna use that then then make sure you've got maybe a driveway with a good slope to it somewhere where it, everything can kind of drain off um, but I do think it would have worked I think you would have probably had to go back and maybe use, do a little more hand work though using that as opposed to a pressure washer uh, maybe some uh, you know different hemostats and some little picks and just kind of gotten in there and, and maybe little, little tiny brushes or something but it did seem to be blasting everything off which if I had a simmered it longer that actually may have worked out even better uh, but it was doing the job so I, I totally think you could use a high pressure nozzle on a garden hose to do this but I'll let it get totally dry get it mop and glowed to seal the bone and I'll go ahead and make sure I get some shots some close-ups of this so you guys can see how it actually turns out all right you guys take care okay so I've immediately followed up by getting started on a couple of more uh, European mounts deer skulls and so that I'm not working in the kitchen and I can do a couple of them out of at a time what I've done is I've gone ahead and just hooked up my fish fryer and I wanted to be really sure that I did not end up scorching the antlers from the heat we've got a little bit of a windy day 
So what I've done is just taken the lid of a 55 gallon drum. I've cut out a, I would say maybe eight inch diameter hole, 10 inch diameter hole in the middle and set it down on top of my fish fryer. So there's no way the flames are gonna come up around the pot and scorch the antlers. I will say from the first one I did, it is super, see if I can get an angle here, super, super critical when you're doing this that you wrap all the way slightly below the pedicle or the burr of the antler and really get it wrapped up well and taped off I wasn't quite so careful with the first one I did and the very it, it, it took off some of the color on the burr it's not that big a deal it's on the back side you can't see it it's not very much but I know it's there and I know I can go ahead and restain it carefully uh, if I decide to do so but it's just it, it's gonna save you a step in trying to restain and get it to come out looking natural if you'll just go ahead and wrap it up really well tape it off zip tie around the top of the electrical tape to make sure the steam and the heat doesn't start loosening it up uh, before you put it in the boil and so what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this to a good rolling boil and I really think I'm just going to go ahead and let it simmer for about 20 minutes I don't think I let the first one simmer quite long enough I've got just just a couple of spots where you can kind of see some of the oil in the bone it's not real bad I may go back and re-simmer that one. I'm not sure just yet. But yeah. I think this is just going to work out real nicely. Not a huge amount of expenditure. Using things most people are going to have around the home anyway. And we're going to be able to get some good professional looking whitened skulls for European mounts. All right, we've got our deer skull thoroughly cleaned. It's been bleached, whitened. I'm really happy with the way it's come out. But we've got a couple little spots here. I know it's pretty much out of sight, out of mind, but I know it's there. I ended up, ended up bleaching right down here around the pedicle around the burr of the antler. So I'm gonna go ahead and address that and then we're gonna seal the bone. We're gonna seal the skull and we're just gonna use some regular flooring mop and glow, fresh citrus scent. But I think while I'm doing this, I just go ahead and Kind of go down the list of some different concerns that I've figured out from doing just this first one <clears throat> and I've gone ahead and followed up and done uh, I'm in the process of doing three more and I want to make sure I kind of just succinctly go down the list of concerns or, or kind of the way I, I'm thinking this is how I'm going to do it from now on the bone is unsealed and it's very porous and so it is it is real easy for it to pick up any kind of stain and I don't just mean like wood stain I mean you set it down on a surface that looks clean but it's not totally clean and it gets on this white bone this porous bone will want to just like it just wants to suck up that color even if your hands are oily and maybe uh, they're clean but they're not super clean and you're touching the skull it can pick up a little bit of color so a really best bet is just to make sure your hands are clean don't set it on anything that is not absolutely clean and once it's done go ahead and get it sealed but I'm just going to use a little bit of stain on a q-tip and I'm going to hold the, antler, the head upside down because I do not I do not want the stain to drip and run down on the skull. Get in here. 
probably need to be using just a little darker color. But I'm going to get in here and just kind of dab that on with a Q-tip. Just to kind of go over a few things. The way this seems like it's going to work best is to go ahead and bring your pot up to a boil. Uh, go ahead and put in, you know, about a half a scoop, quarter of a scoop, half a scoop of the uh, OxyClean. And I did get the super whitening OxyClean um, just because, I mean, we're trying to whiten it. So uh, any kind of OxyClean is probably going to work if you just have some other type that's sitting around the house. But I did get the super whitening OxyClean. But go ahead and bring your pot up to a boil. Put your skull and the jaw in there. And for a deer skull, every skull is going to be a little different. You know, younger, younger skulls are going to be a little more delicate. Older skulls are going to be able to take more heat. But basically, I let the skull get up to heat and kind of get the water up to a good rolling boil. And then I went ahead and cut the heat down and let the skull simmer for about 20 minutes. Uh, at that point, I took it right out of the heat. I got out there and I blasted everything off and out of it. I mean, every crack, crevice every hole every orifice if there is a hole in the skull there is going to be some other hole somewhere that is connected to it so blast into every hole um, you saw i removed the earbuds and i actually drilled out a little hole that way i was able to get in there and really thoroughly clean and blast it out and you can see here i totally took everything out of that nasal cavity. I reached in there with the forceps and I grabbed it, crunched some of it as kind of a bone material, some of it is cartilage, but I totally twisted and snapped all of that out of there except for the thin bit of bone that is right here covering the outside of the nasal cavity. And this is real thin and delicate. So as I was blasting, I'd hit it kind of a glancing blow, but I was real careful how hard I was actually hitting this bone because I didn't want to knock it out. Now if you were to knock it out just save it you can glue it back in place with some super glue but I was just being real careful not to actually knock this out but I removed everything else so that I could thoroughly clean and blast everything out. Okay so after I got it as clean as I could get it. I, I went ahead and dumped out the old water, cleaned my pot, you know, I, I didn't scrub it. I went ahead and blasted it out, any oils and grease that were in it. I filled it up with fresh water, put in uh, another pinch of OxyClean, and I went ahead and simmered the skull for about another 15, 15, 20 minutes. You know, use your judgment. You can always check on it. As long as it's not getting that real chalky, flaky look to it, then you, you should still be okay. Once it starts getting kind of that chalky, flaky look, then it means the bone is actually getting attacked. Um, but yeah, I, I went ahead and re-simmered it. it. It seemed to really get that last little bit of residual oil that was in the bone out of it. And then I went ahead and whitened it. And I put that Salon Care Peroxide on here. I let it sit for about 16 or 17 hours. And then I rinsed it all off and then I let it thoroughly dry in front of a fan. Okay, so basically in a nutshell, that is, is what I did. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else y'all may need to know but yeah what I was saying all all these little holes like this all these holes you really need to get in there real good with the water blast everything out because uh, a lot of them I, there's actually like a nerve that would shoot out so um, just make you know thoroughly clean 
I'm going to put this in my house. I want it to be thoroughly clean. Like I said, just going to use some regular, regular flooring mop and glow. Just got a cheap little one inch 99 cent brush. And I'm just going to go over the whole thing with a thin coat to go ahead and seal this bone so it doesn't end up picking up dust. You know, like I said, this bone is very porous. Um, I don't want you know dust to settle into it and work its way into the, the pores. And you, you're never going to get that back out of there. So we're just going to go over the whole thing, give it a nice little coat to seal it. And then once it is dry, we are ready to decide how we're going to mount it to display it. So yeah, there you have it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner.